Tripitaka. Three Texts on Consciousness Only. By Shi and Sang. The Thirty Verses on Consciousness Only by Vajabandhu. The Treatise in Twenty Verses, on Consciousness Only by Vajabandhu. Translated from the Chinese of Shi and Sang Francis H. Cook. First Printing, 1999 Numata Center for Buddhist Translation and Research. Chapter 14. The Dharma Body. 1. The State of Culmination. Last, what are the characteristics of the state of culmination? The last verse of Vajabandhu's verses says. It is the perf realm. Inconceivable, good, eternal. Blissful, and the body of liberation. Which in the great Muni is named Dharmaikaya. The treatise says that the transmutation of the support acquired by the former state of cultivation should be understood as the characteristic of the state of culmination. That is, 17 refers to the result of the previous two transmutations of the support, which means that the result is categorized as the pure realm of culmination. 2. The Pure Realm It is called pure because all impurities have eternally ended, there is no increase of impurity or propensities, and it is pure by nature, perfect, and bright. Reem has the meaning of store, because in it are harbored boundless marvelous, great qualities, alternately, it has the meaning of cause, because it has the power to generate the mundane and supermundane benefits and joys of the five vehicles i.e., all people. The pure realm of the Dharma may be categorized as exclusively pure, but how can the classes of mind of the four kinds of knowledge be exclusively pure? They are included in the truth of the path and for that reason are categorized as exclusively pure. That is, the qualities, as well as bodies, lands, etc., of Buddhas are born of pure seed natures, because the impure seeds have been eternally rejected. Even though there is manifesting and creation of samsaric bodies and actions and passions, which appear to be the truths of suffering and cause, nevertheless, in reality, these are included in the pure truth of the path. The Abhidharma Samukha and other works say that fifteen sense fields, etc., are exclusively impure. Can it be that the Tathagata whose consciousness is pure is devoid of the five organs, five corresponding consciousnesses, and five sense fields? There is an interpretation by proponents of the three treatise school that the qualities, bodies, and lands of a Tathagata are profound and subtle, neither existing nor not existing, apart from all discrimination, severing all idle discourse, and not included among Dharma categories such as sense bases, sense fields, etc. Therefore, there is no contradiction with the explanation of the Abhidharma Samaka. According to another interpretation, the five sense organs of a Tathagata and the five corresponding objects are born from a profound Samadhi and for that reason are categorized as form of the realm of the Dharma. Even though the five consciousnesses of non-Buddhas are based on this transformation of a Tathagata's consciousness, there is nevertheless a difference of course and subtle, and the objects of that consciousness are not categorized as the five objects as ordinarily understood. The five consciousnesses of a Tathagata are not included in the sense bases of consciousness, because a scripture says that the five sense consciousnesses are by nature distracted famine non-Buddhas. With what consciousness is knowledge of achieving the task associated? It is associated with the sixth consciousness, because it generates the transformations i.e., bodies, and their functions. Is there any difference between this knowledge and the nature of knowledge of wonderful observation? This latter knowledge contemplates the specific and common characteristics, etc., of various dharmas, while that previous knowledge only generates transformation, so there is a difference. It may be objected that these two classes of knowledge must not occur together, because two consciousnesses of the same species do not occur together. There is no conflict with reason to admit that they do not occur together, for there is no error if they are the same in substance but function in different ways at the same time. Alternately this knowledge is associated with the purified seventh consciousness. Having as objects such things as form, etc., in dependence on such organs as eyes, etc., is the special function of the knowledge of sameness. That is, when the pure seventh consciousness generates bodies for the enjoyment of others and images of lands, it is categorized as the class of knowledge of sameness, when it generates transformations, it is categorized as the class of knowledge of achieving the task. Is this class of knowledge not acquired by the transmutation of the five sense consciousnesses? 
it is not that although acquired by that transmutation its substance is that of the five consciousnesses, just as although it is said that one acquires nirvana through the transmutation of samsara, it cannot be said that nirvana is included in samskara in the same way. Therefore there should be no difficulty as far as this present position is concerned. There is an interpretation which is the correct one, that the qualities, bodies, and lands of a Tathagata are included in the aggregates, sense bases, and sense fickles as the case may be, but these three categories of dharmas may be impure or pure. When the Abhidharmasamukha and others say that fifteen sense fields, etc., are impure only, that is said with reference to coarse and superficial objects in consciousness of the two vehicles, but they do not mean all objects in consciousness, as in a Buddha. That is, of the eighteen sense fields attained by others than a Buddha, only the last three are categorized as pure, although those attained by a Buddha are all pure, they are not included in objects known by the two vehicles. Indeed, when other sources say that the Buddha's qualities, etc., are not sense fields, etc., it is because they are unlike the characteristics of sense fields, etc., known through the inferior knowledge of the two vehicles. This must be the principle. Why? Because it is said that all conditioned dharmas are completely included in the aggregates, because all dharmas are categorized as sense bases and sense fields, and because a nineteenth sense field, etc., is rejected by the wise. If they are not sense fields, etc., because we end idle discourse, then we ought not to say that the result of practice is a pure realm, good, eternal, blissful, the body of liberation, etc. Moreover, place after place says that one transmutes impermanent aggregates and acquires permanent aggregates. This must also be the case with sense bases and sense fields. Can we say that a Tathagata is not aggregates, sense bases, and sense fields? Therefore when it is said that he is not, it is said with a hidden meaning. Also, when it is said that the five sense consciousnesses are by nature distracted, this refers to those attained by others, not those attained by a Buddha. Therefore, all eighteen sense fields, etc., are wholly contained in the body of a Buddha, but they are totally pure. 3. Inconceivable. This result of the transmutation of the support is also inconceivable, because it transcends reflection and verbalization, because it is subtle and profound, is realized within oneself, and because the world can find no comparison for it. 4. Good. It is also goop, because it is by nature a good, white dharma because the pure realm of the dharma is removed from generation and extinction and is extremely tranquil, because the subtle functioning of the classes of mind of the four kinds of knowledge is incomparable and extremely skillful, and because both kinds of result have beneficial characteristics and oppose the non-good, hence it is said to be kun. A treatise says that of the twelve sense bases, etc., eight are exclusively non-determined as to moral species, but how can a Tathagata be devoid of the five sense organs and their three objects of smells, tastes, and solid objects? The three explanations concerning this should be made the same as before in discussing sense fields. All dharmas of a Tathagata, such as bodies, lands, etc., are included in cessation and path of the four noble truths, therefore they are exclusively good, because the saints declare that cessation and path are by nature good only, because it is said that the lands, etc., of a Buddha are not included in the truths of suffering and cause. Characteristics of impurity, non-good, non-determined, etc., as transformations of the Buddha's consciousness, all appear from seeds that are pure and good and are categorized as pure and good. 5. Eternal. This result is also eternal, because it is endless. The pure realm of the Dharma is said to be eternal because it is devoid of origination, devoid of cessation, and by nature unchanging. Because the support of classes of mind of the four knowledges is eternal, they are endless and therefore said to be eternal, but not that they are eternal by nature, because they originate from causes, because of the categorical declaration that that which is born ends with cessation, and because we do not see form or mind that is not impermanent. However, as a result of the power of original vows and the inexhaustible number of sentient beings to be converted, the four classes of knowledge last forever, uninterrupted and endless. 6. Blissful. It is also blissful, because it is devoid of torment. It is said to be blissful because the multitude of characteristics of the pure realm of the Dharma are tranquil. 
Because the classes of mind of the four knowledges are eternally separated from torment, they are called blissful. The natures of the two results, i.e., two Urvana and Bodhi are wholly devoid of torment and are able to give bliss to all sentient beings, and therefore the two transmutations of the support are together referred to as blissful. 7. The Body of Liberation The result of the two transmutations of the support of followers of the two vehicles is only freedom from the bondage of the obstacle of the passions and lacks admirable dharmas, and therefore it is only referred to as the body of liberation. 8. The Dharma Body The greatly awakened world-honored one has attained supreme dharmas of silence, and for that reason he is named the Great Muni i.e., Silent One. The two results acquired by this Muni, the world-honored one, are eternally separated from the two obstacles and are also named Dharmakaya Dharma Body, as well as Body of Liberation, because they are ornamented with dharmas that are great qualities, such as the innumerable, boundless powers, the four kinds of fearlessness, etc. Its meanings of substance, support, and accumulation are given the comprehensive name, body, therefore this dharma body is by nature the five dharmas of the realm of the dharma and the four knowledges. It is not the pure realm of the dharma alone that is named, dharma body, because the results of the two transmutations of the support are wholly included in it. This dharma body is distinguished in three ways. The first is the essential body, that is, it is the real, pure realm of the Dharma of all Tathagatas, the unchanging support of the bodies of enjoyment and transformation, free of characteristics, tranquil, beyond all idle discourse, endowed with boundless real, eternal qualities, the unchanging true nature of all Dharmas. Accordingly, the essential body is also called the Dharma body because it is the support for Dharmas that are great qualities. The second is the body of enjoyment. This is of two kinds. The first is the body of personal enjoyment, that is, the boundless real qualities generated by the innumerable merits and knowledge accumulated by Tathagatas over three immeasurable eons, along with an extremely perfect, pure, eternal, omnipresent material body. It continues, placid, to the end of time, and always enjoys for itself the great joy of the Dharma. The second is the body for the enjoyment of others. As a result of the knowledge of sameness, Tathagatas manifest bodies of subtle, pure qualities and abide in a thoroughly pure land. For the hosts of bodhisattvas on the ten stages, they manifest great supernatural powers, turn the wheel of the true dharma, and rend the nets of the multitudes of doubts, causing bodhisattvas to enjoy the joy of the Mahayana dharma. These two bodies together are called the body of enjoyment. The third form of the dharma body is the transformation body. As a result of the knowledge of achieving the task, Tathagatas manifest through transformation innumerable transformation bodies and dwell in pure and impure lands in accordance with the species of being. For hosts of bodhisattvas who have not yet entered the ten stages, followers of the two vehicles, and ordinary people, taking into account their capacities, they display supernatural powers, preach the Dharma, and cause each to secure things that are beneficial and pleasing. <laughs>